We are going to discuss now how the stress components can be added. We start with the simple case. Consider orthogonal coordinate axis OX and OY and there is a vector OP1 from O towards P1 it is acting its coordinate is X1 Y1 the P1's coordinate there is another vector OP2 arrows are giving the direction of action of the stresses and they are acting on a common point O. P2 has a coordinate x2, y2. So the question is suppose OP1 and OP2 are the two stress as vectors, what is the resultant vector sigma r? What is the coordinate? What is the magnitude of this vector and also this stress component? Now here angle P1 OX, P1 OX is equal to alpha 1 will be given by tan inverse y1 divided by x1 let us call it angle alpha 1. Now angle p2 ox where is that p2 ox let that angle be alpha 2 so that I can write as tan inverse y2 divided by x2. So the angle between op1 and op2 the angle between op1 and op2 which is the angle p1 op2 p1 O P2 this angle will be equal to alpha 2 minus alpha 1 which is this expression minus that expression. Let us say this angle is equal to theta. So this angle between the two stresses is theta. Now we can also write that the OP1 length that is the magnitude of the stress is square root of y1 square plus x1 square and the op2 length can be written as square root of y2 square plus x2 square. Now I am considering the op2 vector as p vector and the op1 vector as the q vector. Now assume that opr is the resultant vector which I have drawn over here. Uh, from this drawing I have taken op2 here op2 and straightway I have drawn the OPR the resultant vector as stress and let us say this PR has a coordinate XR comma YR. So now what I can write regarding the OPR length I can apply the formula like this is P and that is Q so square root of P square plus Q square plus 2 PQ cos theta. Now P is known Q is known and theta is known here if we put all these things we will get the resultant magnitude of the stress. And one more thing can be done the angle between OPR and OP2 where is that? The angle between OPR and angle OP2 which is this angle phi. So what I can write phi is equal to tan inverse q sin theta by p plus q cos theta where p is this q is that. So in this way the phi can also be calculated. But getting the phi is not the going to help us we basically need to find out this psi angle what is that the slope of the OPR line on the OX axis. Now I can write that this angle psi is equal to angle PRO x is equal to phi plus alpha 2. Just to recollect this angle P2 O x this angle is alpha 2. So if I write alpha 2 value this is tan inverse y2 by x2. So in this way we can obtain the psi magnitude. Now from the OPR magnitude which I obtained here we can write the OM magnitude that means resolution of this stress along the x axis will be given by OPR length which is here multiplied by cos of psi, psi is the angle this total angle psi and that is the magnitude of OPR vector along the x axis so I can call that as the XR component and this 
PRM will be OPR multiplied by sin psi and this is basically the YR component which is magnitude of OPR vector along the Y axis. So in this way we can obtain the coordinate of PR also as XR comma YR. This is obtained XR comma YR. So we started with the two coordinates X1, Y1 and X2, Y2 and OP1, OP2 were two stresses. So finally we came up with OPR as a resultant stress and XR comma YR as the coordinate of the PR point. Now consider if the OXY plane is horizontal, OXY suppose this green board is basically a horizontal plane and further consider that O towards Y say this is the geographic north direction. So if that is the case then we can do a few more things and here basically we are linking the school level problem into geological problem. If O towards Y is the north direction then this angle will be the trend of O P1 vector from O to P1 this angle. So this will be how much as you can see from the diagram this angle is 90 degree minus alpha 1 and that is what I write here 90 degree minus alpha 1. And similarly if this angle is alpha 2 then this angle is 90 degree minus alpha 2. So these are the trends of OP1 and OP2 given stresses. And what about the OR? This has also got a bit clumsy so I can redraw here. This is the x axis that is the y axis. This is the PR point. OPR is a resultant stress and from here we can write that this angle is equal to 90 degree minus psi because remember this angle is psi. You can look at this diagram. This is psi which is already calculated. So therefore the OR, OPR vector or OPR stress will have a trend 90 degree minus psi. So in this way the coordinate geometry problem can be linked with the structural geological case of plunge and trend. Since we consider a horizontal plane therefore OP1 and OP2 were horizontal they are lying on the plane so their plunges are 0 degree and the resultant vector OPR also lies on the horizontal plane. So therefore the OPR plunge is also 0 degree. So the three vectors the three stresses that we consider in case of this plane is horizontal these all these stresses are horizontal stresses. Now note that this XR YR coordinate can also be stated in a different way. If I add up the X1 and X2 values simply if I add up I will get the XR value over there and if I add up Y1 and Y2 values what are Y1 and Y2? Y1 is here for P1 point and Y2 is for this P2 point. If those are added up we get also Y1 plus Y2 and whatever has been done here if more detailed steps are taken it can be found that XR equal to X1 plus X2 and here YR means Y1 plus Y2. So from here we can take one more step. We have seen how stresses can be represented in terms of 2D coordinate geometry and how if two stresses are acting on a point then the resultant can be found out. The same process can be extended in three dimensional coordinate geometry also or in three dimensional space. Consider that in three dimension OP1, OP2 etc up to OPN are the stresses that are acting. So we are considering that there are n number of stress components and O has a coordinate 0, 0, 0 or the origin and the coordinates of P1, P2, Pn are like X1, Y1, Z1, X2, Y2, Z2 and for Pn it will be Xn, Yn and Zn. Now if OPR is the resultant stress 
with the coordinate of PR as XR, YR, ZR, then as we did with 2D case, in 3D case we can write that XR will be equal to the sum of these X terms that means X1 plus X2 up to Xn. That is what I am writing U equal to 1 to N and XU. Similarly, YR will be sum of U equal to 1 to N YU and ZR will be sum of U equal to 1 to N ZU. Now, these three also can be represented in a single equation. For example, I can write alpha R equal to U equal to 1 to N being summed up alpha U and alpha in one case is X. If it is X, then it goes back to this expression. If it is Y, then it goes back to this expression and if it is Z, it goes back to that expression. Now, once the coordinate is understood, XR, YR and ZR is understood, then the magnitude of the stress OPR can be obtained as square root of XR square plus YR square plus ZR square. These are the XR, YR and the ZR values. Now, this was about the three dimensional space. We were now going to see an n dimensional space where there are m number of stresses acting on point O. O is considered as the origin of the n dimensional space. What are those stresses represented by OP1, OP2 goes up to OPM. So, you can see that here there are m number of stresses that are acting. I have already told you the coordinate of O here is the origin and what about P1? P1 is since it is n dimensional space x1, y1 and it goes up to n1 and for P2 it is x2, y2 and it goes up to n2. Similarly, Pm for this stress will be xm, ym and it will go up to nm. Now, if O P R is the resultant stress in the n dimensional space, then P R coordinate suppose it is x r comma y r and it goes up to n r. Then x r can be represented by sum of all these x coordinate x 1 plus x 2 etcetera up to x m. So, how to write that u equal to 1 to m x u. What is the difference between this and that? Here I was doing u equal to 1 to n and x u, but here I am saying u equal to 1 to m x u. Why it is so? Because here we are considering m number of stresses acting and here we consider that there are n number of stresses acting. So, all those, so it went from u equal to 1 to n sum in all the cases. Since I called it is m number, so therefore u equal to 1 to m and in this way sum for yr ordinate. Similarly, the nr can be obtained u equal to 1 to m nu. The resultant stress OPR and its magnitude will be how much? Square root of xr square plus yr square up to nr square. Where are the xr, yr values? These are xr, this is the yr and up to nr. In this way, it can be obtained. Now, what has been derived or written for the n dimensional space xr, yr and up to nr can be written in this compressed form alpha r is equal to u runs from 1 to m. Note that earlier we were writing u runs from 1 to n because we were considering n number of vectors or stresses to be present whereas here we have considered m number of stresses to be present. So, instead of u equal to 1 to u equal to n, it is u equal to 1 up to u equal to m and then alpha u, alpha is not x, y, z or 3 rather x, y up to n. In our previous case in 3 dimensional space it was x, y and z whereas here it goes as x, y etc. up to n number of such uh, axis. So, in this way the 3D representation and the ND representation of the stress in terms of their addition can be demonstrated. Let us see more about coordinate geometry and stress issue together. We have discussed right now that in the orthogonal coordinate axis if OP1 and OP2 are the two stresses and the arrows mark their direction of action, then for the resultant stress OPR, although I have not plotted PR here, 
Suppose this PR has a coordinate XR and YR, then XR will be equal to X1 plus X2 and YR will be equal to Y1 plus Y2. Just now we have discussed it in two dimensional case, three dimensional case and then the n dimensional space also. Now here we are taking a little bit different thing. What is the difference? OP1 is as it is in this direction from O towards P1 is acting. But instead of OP2 from O to P2, this time it is P2 towards O. So what is the difference? Here the stresses are OP1 and OP2 whereas here we have cases, considered the stresses OP1 and OP2. So this is the basic difference in the direction in one of the stresses. Here instead of going for straight way adding up, we have to first find out the P2 dash coordinate. What is the P2 dash coordinate? This distance can be understood how much it is and if I extend this line in this direction maintaining the same distance and stop then I get P2 dash. So P2 dash is understood and deciphered first. If this is plus x2 and plus y2 then in this quadrant it is minus x2 and then minus y2 that is what I write here. Now we have to find out when I say the resultant between OP1 in this way and OP2 in that way basically we mean that we have to find out the resultant between these two between OP1 and OP2 dash ok. So in that case after this is being done we come back to this formula x1 plus x2 so here it will be x1 minus x2 and then y1 minus y2. Now just to explain similar thing once again suppose OP2 stress is in this direction and OP1 is in this direction. So here we have considered OP2 and OP1. Clearly you can see that this case is different from this case. What is the difference? In this case O to P1 is the direction of action of stress whereas here it is P1 to O is the action of stress. So what do we do? Just like as I discussed here the coordinate will be given by x2 minus x1 for the resultant point and the y coordinate will be given by y2 minus y1, y2 minus y1. Now I will take another case here that from P1 to O there is a stress acting and from P2 to O there is a stress acting. The coordinate of P1 and P2 are all positive x1 y1 x2 y2. So what we have to do we have to find out here P1 dash coordinate and P2 dash coordinate and from there we have to find out the resultant which turns out to be minus x1 minus x2 and for y r it is minus y1 minus y2. Once this is understood in two dimensional case, we can now go to three dimension and also to the n dimensional cases. Now what we discussed for the 2D case, now let us extend it for the three dimensional case also. Consider that OP1, OP2 and OP3 are the three stresses. This one acts from origin towards P1 point but here this one acts from P2 point towards the origin O. O has a coordinate 0, 0, 0 because it is a 3D case and OP3 how it acts from origin towards the P3 point. Now consider the P1 point has coordinate x1, y1, z1 similarly P2 and P3 and suppose that OR is the resultant then R will have a coordinate xr, yr and zr. xr will be given by not x1 plus x2 plus x3 but x1 minus x2, y minus x2 because from O to P2 stress is not acting rather from P2 to O. So instead of P2 taking the coordinate directly I have to find out P2 dash coordinate which will be minus x2. So therefore how I add up x1 minus x2 and then plus x3. Why plus x3 because from O towards P3 it is acting just like what I discussed for the two dimensional case. Similarly the YR and the ZR coordinate can be obtained and the OR length will be square of xr, square of yr and square of zr and then added and then make a square root. 
Now let's move into the n dimensional space and we consider three stresses acting OP1, OP2 and OP3. Say the P1 coordinate is given by x1, y1 up to n1, n number of the numbers are required to represent the coordinate. Similarly for P2, x2, y2 up to n2 and for P3, x3, y3 up to n3. Now suppose OR is the resultant and here also the situation is just like what I did earlier from O to P1 stress is acting but here from P2 to O similar thing I am saying from O to P1 but here P2 to O and O to P3. So what to do in n dimensional space I have to find out the P2 dash coordinate which is P2 dash will be minus x2 minus y2 etc and then minus n2. So how the r coordinate will be given by the xr will be x1 then minus x2 and plus x3. Similarly for yr will be done and similarly for the n, nr will be done n1 minus n2 plus n3. So here we have demonstrated in terms of three stresses. We can consider an n dimensional space with m number of such stresses and similar result can be obtained. We will now see in two dimension using polar coordinate how the stresses can be added. Consider the OX axis and OP1 is a stress, the P1's coordinate is R1 theta1 which means that this length is R1 and this angle is theta1. Consider another stress acting OP2 in this way from O towards P2 just like what happened in the previous one O towards P1. So O towards P2 and P2 coordinate is R2 theta2 which means that this distance is R2 and this angle is theta2. The question is what will be the coordinate of the resultant stress vector. So here we can see that the angle between the given two stresses is theta1 minus theta 2 and that is what I am writing here. Now consider this OP2 to be the like vector P and the OP1 like the vector Q. Now the resultant RR resultant magnitude can be given by the standard formula root over p square plus q square plus 2 pq cos theta and this angle is the angle between the two vectors which is theta. So using this the magnitude of the resultant stress can be obtained. So if this OPR is a resultant stress then the OPR length will be given by this expression. So that is what I write here RR small r and then subscript capital R which means the resultant stress magnitude which becomes one of the coordinates in the polar system for the PR point. Now the angle phi what is that the angle between the resultant stress and the P stress or the P vector what is P vector here OP2 this one. So therefore this angle is the phi and that is given by standard formula q sin theta by p plus q cos theta. Once that is being done the phi is obtained and the angle between OPR line and the OX axis is not just phi but phi plus theta 2. And let us call it as the angle psi. So for the OPR stress the polar coordinate is RR which is already shown and psi which is already found out. So in this way two vectors can be added in a polar coordinate system. Here I am going to talk about the non-orthogonal coordinate axis in two dimensional case and how stresses can be added up in such a case. Consider OX one of the coordinate axis and OY is the other one and they make an angle theta. Unlike the common cases where we take theta 90 degree, here theta is not equal to 90 degree. That is why we call it non-orthogonal coordinate axis. Now consider there is a point P1 which has a coordinate x1 and y1. 
how the x1 and y1 will be defined you have, you can draw a parallelogram by drawing these two white lines and then this distance is the x1 and that distance is the y1 what happens in case of orthogonal coordinate system if there is a point i go here and then move vertically up this distance is my x1 this distance is my y1 so the coordinate is here x1 comma y1 whereas here this is the x1 distance and that is the y1 distance now let's try to understand what happens within the triangle abc what is cb line cb i have drawn a perpendicular line on the ox axis and as you can see this is a parallelogram so if this angle is theta angle cab has also to be theta and the ca length as i told you just now is the y1 distance so here i can from here i can say that ab length is equal to y1 cos theta what is the ab length here this is the ab length this point is a this is the ab length so therefore if the ab length is obtained the ob length will be given by o a this distance plus ab and this distance is x1 so this would be x1 plus y1 cos theta that is is equal to the ob distance as if from point c i dropped a vertical and this vertical line intersects the x axis at point b and from origin o this distance is worked out now again we look at triangle abc and this time we find out sin theta value from this triangle this is the theta angle so sin theta will be given by bc length divided by the ac length so therefore i can say that from here the bc length is equal to y1 sin theta just to recollect this length is y1 so this length is also y1 so the bc length is y1 sin theta so we can say that the coordinate of the point c coordinate of this point c or i have also said as p1 i am going to talk it as p1 in future for the orthogonal coordinate axis we were talking about the non orthogonal coordinate axis now what will happen if we think the coordinate in terms of an orthogonal coordinate axis that means instead of oy axis i am thinking of oy dash axis such that angle y dash ox is equal to 90 degree suppose this coordinate x1 y1 for point c or for for point p1 i want to convert this coordinate into an orthogonal coordinate axis ox and oy dash in that case the coordinate will be given by such an expression where x1 plus y1 cos theta is equal to the ob distance this distance and y1 sin theta is this distance so just like along oy dash i have measured so we have obtained the coordinate from non orthogonal axis to the orthogonal axis now one cross checking can be done if you take theta is equal to 90 degree here that means a case where the x axis and the y axis are making 90 degree angle then cos 90 degree is zero so it becomes x1 and y1 sin theta sin 90 is 1 so it becomes x1 y1 which matches with my common sense so with this background now we are moving into non orthogonal coordinate axis for example you can see in this diagram angle x o y is not equal to 90 degree and consider two stresses o p1 in this way it is acting from o towards p1 and o p2 from o towards p2 the stress is acting and in this non orthogonal coordinate system suppose the coordinate of p1 is x1 y1 and that for p2 is x2 y2 so the question is what would be the coordinate of the pr point in non orthogonal or in another coordinate system where opr is the resultant stress i have not drawn that here basically but i can draw here this is op1 and here is op2 so if i draw this is going to be my op r and then this point becomes the pr coordinate 
Now for PR point, the coordinate XR and YR will be given by in orthogonal coordinate system. as follows xr will be equal to look at the previous expression for a single point we did x1 plus y1 cos theta now this is the coordinate in the orthogonal coordinate system and in case of orthogonal coordinate system we have already seen suppose we have the two vectors op1 and op2 p1 has a coordinate x1 comma y1 and here it has x2 comma y2 then the resultant or will have the r coordinate equal to x1 plus x2 comma y1 plus y2 so therefore in this case what will happen we can convert each of them into orthogonal coordinate axis and simply add up so for one point it was x1 plus y1 cos theta the, co the x ordinate for one of the points so for both of the points we can think what it will be x1 plus y1 cos theta and x2 plus y2 cos theta so they will be added up like this xr coordinate will be x1 plus x2 plus y1 plus y2 multiplied by cos theta what about the second ordinate over here for a single point it is y1 sin theta so for two points it will be y1 sin theta plus y2 sin theta so that's what i write here yr ordinate will be y1 plus y2 sin theta for how from the non orthogonal coordinate one can find out the orthogonal coordinate so therefore you can also find out from the orthogonal coordinate xr yr what will be the non orthogonal coordinate for that you need to find out a suitable transformation and you can work with that and how much is the length of the vector this will be given by x r square plus y r square so with two vectors o p 1 and o p 2 or two stresses o p 1 and o p 2 it has been demonstrated if there are n number of such stresses o p 1 o p 2 up to o p n then similar approach will be done what would be the result in that case x r will be x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3 up to x n plus y 1 plus y 2 plus y 3 up to y n that sum multiplied by cos theta whereas here y r will be y 1 plus y 2 plus y 3 up to y n and then multiplied by sin theta i repeat what will come out will be the coordinate in the orthogonal coordinate system